Welcome back once again to the Barber's Bun 250, round two of the Ural Trucks Fila Africa Inland Off-Road Championship as we continue our coverage of the prologue that sets up the starting order for the main event. It was the first time out for father and son pairing Martin Van Josvelt Sr. and Jr. in the A69 Bat Spec 4, having recently bought the ex Marius Farid National Championship winning car. Alternator problems hampered their progress and they pulled out of the prologue race to see if they could effect some emergency repairs in the DSP in time for the main event, where they would clearly start way down the order. Off-road racing is truly a family affair, with so many family names competing, brothers, sisters, husbands and wives, fathers and sons-in-law, and many more combinations to follow. Yet another father and son pairing was that in the G13, Louis and son Christian Schliebusch piloting a Canon Maverick in the highly competitive side-by-side -side class. Still relative newcomers to racing, they only competed in a few events in 2019 and missed out on the first 2020 event of the season. They are not there to make up the numbers though, as they have shown good pace but ultimately lack seat time and experience. We're hoping for good things to come for the future for this father and son pairing. More family this time, brothers Michael and Jean de Beer from Luchtenberg in the M&J Motors G22 entry in yet another Can-Am Maverick. This was also their first time racing in the Ural Trucks Fila Africa Inland Off-Road Championship Series, so they are also an unknown quantity. At the end of the prologue, they surprised everyone by not only posting the fastest time in the Class Gs, but a handy third place overall. Suddenly, everyone was sitting up and taking notice of the brothers, questioning could they take it all the way come the main event? The S7 twin turbo diesel Ford Ranger of Stain Viviers was plagued by mechanical and electrical issues of late. He started off the season with new rookie lady navigator Alida Fouchier. A DNF in the first round meant starting off the season on the back foot. However, the pairing were determined as ever to do well at the Barberspan 250. All the way from Bloemfontein, they were hoping for a good showing, possibly a podium finish, grabbing good points towards this championship and taking home some trophies. Let's hope their issues are now a thing of the past. With Dad Yanni Fisser now racing the Ford Ranger in Class T, his Class S Bucky was commandeered by two of the Fisser youngsters, that of Chris Jr. and Peter. We're not quite sure how the conversation went in the Fisser household, but the end result was now an eager youngster pairing. Could they be a chip of the old block? Early on it was obvious that they didn't lack the speed, but perhaps just a little bit of experience. In off-road racing there's a saying, to finish first, first you must finish. Pace is good, but so is staying on the track and not veering off. Sometimes the youngsters will just overcook it, but there's plenty of speed and future to come. For Hein Kruger and Albertus Fenter in the D4 Toyota Hilux, they were looking for a good showing. Hein had a superb start to the 2019 season, but the second half of 2019 cost him dearly with mechanicals and issues dropping him down the championship. Could 2020 be the season to get it all turned around? Rodney Cook and Greg Parkin were hoping to put the first event of the season behind them. At the Excelsior 250, they returned to racing after missing a year. The E14 HUD Racing Nissan cried enough when a Conrad went through the block, therefore scoring a DNF and zero points. Barberspun has also proven to be a tough one for the E14 entry in the past. 2020 needed to be a good one. Class E has consistently had the toughest competition in the last few seasons, and 2020 was once again no exception. New pairing for the 2020 season, Wayne Smith and Victor Fincham had a torrid time in the first of the 2020 season's events. The E16 Toyota Hilux limped back as last finisher and the two of them were looking for a turnaround in fortunes at round number two. They certainly have the experience to do well, but off-road racing is a cruel mistress and anything can and will happen. They needed to do well to back maximum points for their championship quest, but had a grueling 312 kilometers still ahead of them. Oki and Jandre Kruger, father and son in the F8 entry, have been very fast of late and when it mattered especially. It seems like they've been racing forever and the Hilux is just getting better and better. At the Excelsior 250 round one of the Ural Trucks Fila Africa Inland Off-Road Championship, they scored a handy second place in Class F to open up their 2020 account. 
But the barber spun race has traditionally taken its toll on competitors and to merely finish this race, you stand a good chance to be on the podium due to the traditionally high attrition rate. In the second propeller sensor entry, Dolph de Toy and Ruel van der Vestesen in the E2 Toyota Hilux are always up for a fight for the top step of the podium. This too in the toughest class in the championship. Never backing down from a race fight, Dolph has often been involved in three or sometimes four-way tussles for class honors in the 2019 season. Second in the 2019 championship, they were looking to do one better this season, opening their account with a fine second place at the Excelsior 250 round number one. Ahmed Jada in the Nissan Hardbody finally shrugged the bad luck off his back which plagued him over the last two seasons with a fine win at the first event of the season, winning Class F with navigator Keith Smith alongside. The F4 Nissan showed what it's capable of and a very happy Ahmed and Keith were looking for more of the same, please. Johan Viesa and Jerry Bisson in the E5 Toyota Hilux showed great speed in 2019, but reliability was an issue and hampered their championship aspirations. They kicked off the season with a bang, winning Class E at the Excelsior 250. Looking to repeat this feat at Barberspan, things started well when they qualified first in Class E in the prologue, throwing down the gauntlet to the rest of the Class E entries. This was the car to chase. Swayze Moray was back in action following some knee issues from last season with the experienced Jocks LaRue alongside him in the E26 Toyota Hilux entry. The pairing were out to prove what they could do for the running of the championship honours. They started off the 2020 season with a fourth place in Class E at round number one and certainly looked to improve on that to go 3, 2 or 1. Hard-charging Johan Besson with Devan Kutsia in the older Toyota Hilux weren't going to stand back for anyone. What the E11 Bucky lacks in pace and suspension, Johan makes up for in, shall we say, enthusiastic driving. Older Bucky or not, they posted the third fastest time in the qualifying prologue, beating some newer models of Bucky's along the way. Could they keep it up in the main race and could the old dog hold together? If it wasn't for bad luck, Regan Austin and Warren Foss in the D16 Toyota Hilux would have none at all. Missing out on the first race of the season, they were going to play catch up the whole way through 2020, especially in the hotly contested class such as Class D. But Lady Luck had left them once again and a blown motor called an end to proceedings for the race and another DNF was just not what the team were looking for. Back once again with their Isuzu to challenge the Toyotas and one Nissan in Class E with the brothers Ignis and Gerard Duplessis in the E8 entry. Still struggling to get the Isuzu sorted to the extent of becoming serious challengers to the front end of Class E, the brothers more than made up for it in sheer determination and grit. Their prologue was unfortunately not without issues though, dropping them down the order towards the tail end of Class E for the main event. Defending Class B champions Colleen Croshaw and Marina van Skalkveik, one of our all-lady teams, were looking at great things in the Barberspun 250. Carrying B1 meant there was a target on their back, but they were equally determined to defend their title, come what may. Already picking up problems though in the prologue, the ladies seemed to have their work cut out for them in the long main race that lay ahead. Hot on the heels of the ladies were the husbands of those ladies. CFE van Skalkveik and Arthur Croshaw in the B2 Marco. With the ladies experiencing problems, the guys did catch up to them and although now ahead on time, the girls weren't going to let them by easy without putting up a fight. That'll make some interesting conversation come the long drive home. With all cars accounted for, 
we go back down and check out the results to see who was going to be lining up first and last come the main race with the prologue wrapped. Here's how it all broke down then. Ernst Roberts and Henry Kerner top of the charts. They would lead things out, chased down by Yanni Fisser and Donny Marais, with Michael and Jean de Beer doing a great job. Third place and fastest of the Gs, just ahead of Stomfi, Maynard and Adrian Roots. Chris Fisser Jr. and Peter Fisser, after robbing their dad's old bucky, did a great job to put the S10 up into eighth place, just ahead of Keith and Andrew McInetti. A good job in the P's for the open wheels. With the crews coming back into DSP, there were certainly some stories to be caught up on. Uh, we had Barberspunk today. We uh, unfortunately had a bit of a mishap uh, 24 kilometers into the prologue. Our uh, right front wheel hub had a fracture in it, and unfortunately, as we were on a straight road and applying brakes, the hub actually just broke off. So that was our uh, DNF for today. But the section that we were on were actually quite a lot of fun, very muddy, lots of water, and the car was, yeah, we battled a bit with traction here and there, but it was fun up until the end where we unfortunately had to, uh, to quit for the day. Good day, everyone. It's Dane here. I'm from Lufontein, S7. Me and my co-driver, uh, Alida Fushia. Very nice race, well marked. Um, very wet and slippery, but uh, it's all fun and games. That's why we're here. I want to thank all my sponsors here at my back, helping us to do this and also our God. Thank you. So that's the prologue wrapped, and as always, Barber's Bun is living up to its take no prisoners reputation. Coming up after the break, the main race. <laughs> 